Rodney James here for Cage Side Press. I'm here with Dr. Dyke, and please remind me of your uh, your title. You work for Aurora Cannabis. You're uh, leading the uh, the charge on all the medical research into the CBD partnership with the UFC. What's your actual title? Uh, I'm the chair of the uh, Global Science Committee. I see. And uh, earlier when we had the press conference, I asked you about your background, and you, you actually have an extensive background, not only as a professor, but you've, you've done a lot of research, and you've done research in... Um, in plants for, for medicinal purposes as well, not not just cannabis. Yeah, absolutely. We've been I've been studying a, a compound for over a decade, resveratrol, and so I know I was talking to Forrest the other day, and he ta he takes it. So it's one of these products that we had been I had been studying as my independent lab at the university, and uh, again, just having plants as medicine background made studying cannabis, you know, the easy an easy fit, and uh, certainly very exciting. Was it Aurora Cannabis has been one of the companies that's been sort of leading the charge? I know they're the, one of the first, if not the first, to ever be a publicly traded cannabis company. Um, was it a situation where they, because of your status and because of your background, they sort of recruited you, or how, how did you get together with them? Yeah, so I was, uh, I was, um, I'm a friend of Terry, so the CEO, so I've known him for a number of years, and I think early days of the company, they it was, you know, cannabis still had a. St uh, much larger stigma attached to it than there is now and I think that uh, part of the motivation may have been to to have you know credible individuals uh, that would be able to be part of the company and, and have input and so he approached me and asked if I would consider being uh, you know helping helping their science and 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 I t told him very frankly unless you are planning to do uh, medical research uh, then I, I won't, won't be a part of it. And he said, no, I, I promise you this will be our major focus. And he held true to his word, and here we are, leading, you know, if the leading medical cannabis company in the world. So, Yeah, and that is a tough mountain to climb because, as we discussed before during the press conference, there, there's, there's very little uh, research, but there are a lot of claims about the benefits of CBD. There are, are many, many claims. And you, you talked about just a few of them, anti-inflammation, uh, things like for, for pain, for sleep, even for anxiety. Um, I wonder, you know, like, uh, it, is the reason that you want to do this is sort of to be to set a standard for uh, and, and sort of lead by example? Because I think that once you start to produce some good results, there's going to be there will be other researchers that will try to follow in your footsteps. Oh, absolutely. But, you know, at the end of the day, we welcome competition for sure. I mean, at the end of the day, we're going to be making we believe is going to be the best products. If um, if someone is able to make better products, then that's better for for health of many individuals whether it be athletes or just the uh, high performance athletes or just the routine athlete or just the health and wellness sector so we welcome the competition as always aurora is 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 leading uh, and so we don't ever plan taking our foot off the gas and but but i'm um, happy to be i'm welcome the competition because at the end of the day safer products healthier people I want to talk about the logistics for a minute. You're the lead researcher. Um, you're based in Canada. Will you take up a residence in Las Vegas, or it, it, will you also do research back in Canada, or is it going to be done? I know it's primarily at the PI because obviously your subjects, your test subjects, are all going to be UFC athletes exclusively. Correct. That's correct. Yes. And then what? You know, like I said, will anything take place back there, or will you, what is your team like, and what is your? Uh, I know it's the PI, but within there, what is your actual facility um, going to be? So we have we have a number of facilities across Canada that are you know lab labs that are built you know, purpose for doing research, and so much of that will will take place there. We can even do product development in Canada. Canada, the regulatory uh, framework is is very different um, than than in the U.S. and it might allow us to to develop products and move them quicker to to human trials, and you know. Even if we study them in patient cohorts that are not athletes, but they are individuals who are just have chronic pain, for example, and we show that that's a benefit. We know what they're taking. We've developed it, and then that can be an offshoot of what 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 the uh, fighters here will, will receive. So, so in other words, um, the administration obviously will take place here in Las Vegas at the PI with the athlete the athletes, some of the observation, the self-reporting and things like this. But what you're saying is you also have multiple facilities where the lab work, the, the blood work, things of that nature could be done. It doesn't have to be necessarily done in one place. Right. I mean, other than products being, you know, being crossing the border, which is not going to happen, anything that we're going to make for the UFC will be a U.S.-based, you know, hemp grown here um, until the, if, if and when the regulatory landscape changes in the U.S. But 
So, th so there is clear distinctions that certainly the information that we'll gain from any of the research that we've been doing already with, with um, over 80,000 patients in, in Canada who are taking medical cannabis, uh, be able to gain information from them. That's going to feed into the Performance Institute. Even what we gain information from the trials that we're doing here is going to help, I believe, our, our patients in Canada. So uh, at the end of the day, we're a global company. Research will take place wherever it needs to take place. I see. And my last question is actually uh, in talking about product development, I want to talk about placebos because right now in the initial phase you're doing you're gathering data and once you proceed past that and in, into administration topical creams and things like this that's a pretty easy placebo to develop when you get into some of the other things that the athletes are used to taking like the tinctures especially anything that's taken orally those are going to be a little bit harder to create aren't they because i mean i think somebody who uses cannabis on a regular basis is able to tell orally when they take something that's whether it's not actually cannabis does that make sense yeah i mean there's for sure i mean that's why you do a placebo controlled study uh, i'm looking it's going to be more difficult to do it for creams and topicals because if you have an immediate muscle injury you know you almost can't do a placebo control because you're going to try the try the ointment um the, the that that is that whether the just the injury itself is going to heal over a natural progression so it's not as though it's a chronic s situation like anxiety, you can't sleep, or, or chronic pain. But, but those are the ones I'm more looking forward to treating. Once the regulatory um, hurdles are overcome and the landscape change, we can actually then deliver this medicine orally. And I think there you're going to be able to see some very tightly controlled, randomized placebo control. Um, but, yeah, again, whether or not people are going to be able to, to determine that. Um, but, you know, we, the products will be as matched as possible, but one would be minus a, a CBD and the other one wouldn't be. So I'm not sure that necessarily the, the it would be recognized. It's not like it's having cognitive um, impairment that you would know immediately if you have a, you're high or you're not. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you make a great point, actually. So I guess I had it backwards, you know. Um, but, yeah, when it comes to treating something like anxiety, for example, I mean, self-reporting and observation is a huge part of how you gather your data. So there's always going to be, you know, some type of error. There's going to be, you know, uh, you know, whether it's misreporting, whether it's, I mean, w will you conduct uh, blind studies, double blind studies? H how would something for anxiety, what would that look like? Well, I mean, that's that's on a, a longer phase for mm -hmm. sure we're till, till we're allowed to study the till uh, the oral administration. So, you know, we're, we'll roll it out like any, any university uh, clinical trial, the government approved, um, in this case be FDA approved. So, and, and these will follow the strictest guidelines that that uh, they're available to, or that, that you have to follow to do these clinical studies. So, they I mean, we don't have the, you know, exact layout of this type of, of, of trial, especially since we're, we're not studying oral. Y'all are pioneers. Yeah, so, but but we will use industry standard for sure. Like any any trial that, that pharmaceutical company uses and, and it's and it's approved, those are the type of studies that we're doing. H highest level of, of science that, that, that can be done, peer reviewed, uh, and published. So that would be, again, another stamp of approval from, uh, from our research community. Well, that's amazing, doctor. You're doing great work. So thank you All for right. your time, thank sir. You. Okay. Rodney James signing off for Cage Side Press.